This is what I thought people from the medieval ages looked like on my first event. But as soon as I knew that I liked the hobby, I had to upgrade. And that's what we're gonna do today. So, hello there, my name's Andrew, I'm from the Shieldery, and today we're gonna hand sew a complete medieval clothing set. And the first and most important step is to take a look at the sources. Our main inspiration is the Boxed Man, a bog body who wore one of the best preserved sets of medieval clothing archaeology has to offer. He was dated between 13 and 1400 and most likely belonged to the upper middle class. But we didn't find any underwear. <laughs> The reason for that are the materials used, because underwear was most likely made out of linen fabric, which decomposes way faster in comparison to the woolen fabric, which was used for the rest. So we gotta start with medieval drawings as sources. On the shirt and the hose we're gonna sew, I'm gonna explain you very basic techniques and stuff, which actually took me years to figure out, but now I would consider it basics. <laughs> the pattern is pretty simple and consists out of three shapes, of which we will need two each. The needles I'm gonna use, by the way, mine is like five centimeters long, but if you're a beginner, it's good if you start with something larger, like six and a half centimeters here. We can copy most of the measurements from a large modern day shirt. I'll make it a bit longer and only connect half of the extra length later. I also give the shoulder part an angle. What I'm using here is sewing chalk, a tool I would wish to have known earlier. It's completely removable from fabric, but still gives clear lines. For the body near meshes of the sleeve, I also take the shirt, but because the, of course, pure linen fabric I use here, which doesn't stretch as the modern one, we will have to attach two squares in the armpit additionally. Don't forget to add one or two centimeters to the pattern edges while cutting out. In order to get the thread through the needle eye, I press it between my fingers and slowly reveal it through the eye. We start the seam a few centimeters away from the edge and stitch towards it. In order to not accidentally pull it through the holes, I put the thread between my fingers when I start. When I'm at the edge, I turn around and go back to where we started and make a knot. When I started with sewing, sometimes I accidentally stung through the thread on the backside and created knots which were impossible to undo. To avoid that now, I just pull it away slightly with my pinky. As you can see, I don't pull the thread completely through every hole, which saves a lot of time. The number of holes for which this is possible depends on the kind, material and thickness of the fabric as well as the stitch you use. You can determine that by testing until a strong resistance appears and the fabric fabric starts to deform. While pulling the thread through, it can get tangled up, but you can lower the possibility by like 80% by slightly gripping its end. Now we are near the square's edge and got to switch to the other sleeve side when we are at its diagonal. After reaching the end, we go a few stitches back and forth again. Then we secure it with a knot and clean the thread up like that. Let's go back and finish the connection between the sleeve and the square. We start similar as before, a few centimeters before the action starts. Then we turn around, make a knot and continue. Most of the weight will rest on the shoulder part. That's why I secure it additionally for comfort reasons and endurance over time. Now we can attach the sleeve. Just take care that the top is properly lined up. Okay, I think it fits quite well. Well, it's a bit tight at the elbow, but I just come from workout, so maybe that's the reason. Be it as it is, in theory, we could wear it right now, but the edges are still quite messy and this would get worse over time. So we have to clean them up and then we can start with the underpants. In order to do that, we just flip the edge twice. Then we go along the first flippity flap in zigzag, staying straight on the front and crooked on the back. But if you want, you can change the pattern as you wish. When we are done, we want to close and hide the thread's ends. So we will make the knot here on the inside of the fold. After making that on every border, we can start with the braise. For the brace, we only need three parts. Uh, by the way, those are my personal measurements. If you want, you can check how close you are and if you would have to change something. To make sure that the brace is symmetrical, I just folded it in the middle. For the connection part on the side, I want to show you another stitch. After sewing it together once, you flip the overlap and sew it together for a second time. 
Because we want to connect the hose to the brace directly, we'll need some secured holes. I make a stitch with the needle, put it through the hole and place the thread above. But there are many methods and I'll show you another one later. In order to tighten the brace, we need a tube and a rope inside. And because I just hate to thread something through a tube like that, I just place it before sewing it close. I'm done with the main part now. Let's try it on because if it doesn't fit now, I basically have to start from the beginning. Okay, my jeans is a bit in the way, in the way, but I think it should work. Yeah, well, it feels kind of strange now, but what do you expect? <laughs> Wearing your underwear above your normal clothes. <laughs> Moves quite good, I think. Yeah. So let's close those holes then. Which is actually not so trivial in the edges where you need to make a three-dimensional turn. You always have to move the fabric a bit before the next stitch, then make a stitch back in order to secure it, then you can continue. And this is how it's supposed to look like when you're done. I'm sorry when the light changes from shot to shot. I hired like a new intern only for that and he's not too experienced on that area, so yeah well. Now we can finally start with the main piece, the boxed man. The color of the woolen fabric I chose are a bit different to what you see in the museum. But the original ones most likely were different too and just changed over six to seven hundred years in a bog. Those are a lot of fragments, aren't they? I think the tunic will be the piece of clothing we spend the most time with. And that's because it's just so many large pieces we have to sew together and I better don't calculate how many meters it is exactly. So let's start with the first stitch because that's always the most difficult one because it marks the start of like the main piece of work. And while you're watching me combining those pieces into the final result or one of the five final results I'm wearing two right now, I wanna tell you some of the main advantages of sewing per hand. The first one of course is that it is authentic and that's why your pieces will look like the ones in the museum when you are kind of skilled in this task. Which brings me directly to the second one because the learning curve is very steep when it comes to hand sewing. The first sleeve will look maybe bad but that's normal. What you're seeing in the frame right now is the first shirt I actually saw by the way and won't be that visible when you're done with the piece and your second sleeve will look yeah, well, kind of acceptable. <laughs> the third one is that you can do it practically everywhere. You don't need many tools or electricity or something like that. And when you're on location, visitors enjoy it very much if they can learn how it was done correctly. But when you're at home, and here we are at the fourth one, you can do an even better thing, which is to re-watch some movies you already have watched like too often. <laughs> and on the points of the movie, you're already tired of seeing it, like the Faramir Frodo Samwise story arc, for example. You can concentrate on sewing much more. This video nearly got sponsored by Peter Jackson himself because he called me and offered me his own housing in New Zealand if I just mentioned Lord of the Rings once. But I had to decline because there are no medieval castles in New Zealand. I'm sorry, Pete. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, be it as it is, that's why I need your support now, dear viewer. So please consider joining me on Patreon and don't forget to share, like and subscribe. Uh, I'm done with all the heavy work now from the tunic. I already started with the hem at the bottom and I actually, now I have to get closer again, I actually flipped it twice and now I have to continue with the arms and the neck. And I just wrote with the museum and they told me that it was actually just flipped once for like, uh, with like one centimeter. Uh, I think I'll keep it at the bottom though because nobody will notice except if they watch this video. Crap. Okay. And um, aside from that, I'm quite, I'm quite satisfied. So let's continue with the hose. For that, we'll need the following measurements. Tie, knee, calf and the distance between those three and the scope of the heel. Although we want the hose only to go till here, we'll have to pull it over the whole foot. And that's why we need to take the scope of the biggest part, which is this one. And after taking and writing down those measurements, I made this perfectly fine plan. I will first transfer that to a bit of paper. Then it's much more easy to transfer onto the fabric. It's quite important that you don't lay it parallel to the edges, but in a 45 degree angle. And that's because you can see uh, in this direction it doesn't stretch, but we want the hose to stretch because then it's closer to the leg and it looks more authentic like in all the paintings we got and that's why the 45 degrees. Mm -hmm. 
just to make sure that the measurements and everything is okay, I want to try it before sewing it together. So I have to fix it together with small needles. Afterwards, I put it on very carefully. <laughs> And I think it's quite good. Although it was quite difficult to take the measurements, just to sew them together is very easy, most probably the easiest part we had till now, because they are just cylinders. Another problem we have to face though is that the seam is directly at the back of the knee. In order to make it more comfortable to wear them, we have to fold the edges to one side and then attach it to the fabric itself. And because it's quite difficult to reach them when we are at the middle, we have to do a bit of a trickery. While the first few centimeters go as usual, we soon have too much fabric between our fingers. That's why we have to roll it up very tight. First from the top and then from the bottom. And then we can continue. I also folded the upper edge once and attached it with small stitches because I want to avoid that it rubs against my tight too much. That could hurt really bad after a certain amount of time. Another thing that bugs me is whether I should attach like the sock thing at the bottom. I did a lot of research and nearly every hose has that. But my feet get smelly really really fast and I don't want to have to wash it per hand every day. Another problem we have to face is how do we attach it to our underwear? because it didn't have like two holes at the top where you could put a thread through. Instead, it has those strange leather parts at the top. It took me a long time to figure out what they were possibly used for. I had to do a lot of research, but I found another video in which it is explained pretty well. I'll put a link in the description, of course. The leather strip basically was used as a loop through which the thread was put. I think that's pretty interesting and unusual. So let's do it. Okay, first we pick a distance from the top. I think that should do it. Then we take an awl because we don't want to damage the fabric. We just want to get it out of the way. Yeah. Then for symmetrical reasons, let's say, yeah, yeah, like there. Now let's just make a knot here. The first one isn't difficult. As you can see on the museum piece, this was not in a straight line. It was a bit under tension. So that if we put our second lace later then through it, it lays on this whole fabric stuff here and not on this small part where it could rip, potentially rip. So let's just make a knot here at the top. I think it was, I think the distance was like that, wasn't it? Of course, we now want the same pressure. So let me just estimate that. Let's complete the knot. That looks quite good, doesn't it? Like in the museum. Ah, I want to try this on now. As you can see, I used a new technique for the holes here. <laughs> Basically, I just stitched around this spot before it was cut. Then I cut the slice and then I fastened it again to secure the edges. But now let's continue with the hose. Very nice. You can see as planned, it's, it lies on here. Now let's attach it. Makes a good impression. But if you think this idea won't last that long, tell me in the comments and maybe what I should change. I'm very looking forward to your suggestions and your feedback on that topic here. So let me just put the other one on and then we can continue with the Google. I also made a very elaborate sketch. If I know that the measurements are correct or if they like work and it looks like in the museum, then I'll like write them more clearly for you to see and put them into the frame now. Ah, uh, it worked medium. I definitely add a bit more fabric here, maybe make that larger and make them a bit broader on the sides too. Like not eight, but 10 centimeters, both. Let's take a look at the Google. I connected the most obvious parts, of course. It will be quite a pain in the ass to flip that, but that's a problem we'll have to attach, we'll have to take our attention to later. What unusual thing I also did is that I flipped the seam and, it also, and also attached it once. I did that because I was afraid that they basically always could point upwards and don't stay down. And then I would look like a guy from Futurama, which isn't a bad thing basically, but not medieval. I just moved the microphone because now I have to put it on to show you the next problem. Okay, because if I would just connect this here in a straight line, let me just emulate that. 
then I would have a pointy thing here at the front and I think that would look kind of ugly. Maybe this, uh, this thing would cover it up. Of course it would be on the, okay, I'll flip it to the outside then you can see this even more precise. By the way, I wasn't sure whether I should add that green shape here because I couldn't see it in the piece in the museum. But then I wrote with the guys and they made a recreation themselves and included that. So I took the risk and maybe this will cover up the seam then. But let's just see. I think I'll try it with a loose stitch so that I could disconnect it easily. I choose a red thread for obvious reasons and that you can see it better of course. I first take a large step forward and then a small one backwards. That's enough in order to try it on. I know the stitch has a professional high advanced name but I'm too lazy to google it at this point. <laughs> okay as you can see we definitely got a nose thing pointing out here and here too but this is something I can correct. Let's just cut it off then we can finally sew it together correctly. After that we only have to finish the cloak which also is pretty easy. It's just like two lines we have to sew together. I don't think you need instructions for this at that point now. At this point I want to give a great shout out to Jasper from the museum who answered all my questions. Thank you so much. By the way all the pictures you saw in this video so far can be seen on my Pinterest page which is linked in the description as well as a link to the page of the museum of course. For flipping that long part we'll need two sticks. The first one is what we're gonna insert right into it. I often see how people do that wrong uh, just with one stick. And that's usually a bad idea because already now you can see how it piles up here. But if we just push it back and keep it straight, it's okay. Now we put the first stick on top of the second stick. The first one is always the most tricky part. Let's press them good together here now. Mm, come on. Okay, let's try to help it with the scissors. Here we are talking. Dun dun, da 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 da, dun da. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome, that worked. Now let me let me try it on. I'm so hyped. The last thing of this whole project I need to do is to sew that on on this side. And that's actually quite a good possibility for me to show you another trick I got up my sleeves that took me years to figure out. An improbable hoop. Because with that, you know, it's now my piece is sealed at the back side and on the front side. And now it doesn't move as much as it could. It's properly on its place. I think I will start with the last part, with the last segment of this huge project on the top here to make sure it's properly centered. Okay, somehow it didn't work as it should. I think that's because we have too much large folds in here. So I went to plan B again and it worked quite good. It's basically, I just have my hand under here and then I try to place the fabric in the position I'd like it to be, just very gentle. Then I make my stitch, try to stay everything in the position as it should be. You know, I redid this already like two times. It's because of the strange shape we got here. I, I don't know why it's in the sewing pattern. It's very ugly to work with. This is another method on how you can hide your threads end. You just push with the backside of your needle through the fabric. When you're at the knot, you cut off the other end and pull the knot in. What? It's the revealing shot. Everything has to turn then. That's the rule. <laughs> I 
Okay, how do you think I look? I think it's awesome. It feels quite good. The Google, you know, is a bit tight, but if I want, I can correct that. And if something of your outfit you'll probably make isn't good as well on the first try, you can correct it without any worries. I hope you enjoyed this process as much as I did. And uh, it feels so good to finally being able of making everything I need for the next event by myself. What about the shoes? What? The shoes! To be continued. <laughs> well, before my other video comes out, maybe you want to check out some of my other content. And also thanks. Thanks a lot to all my Patreons, also to the new guy. And then I'm... Dang, didn't I already say something about Patreons? Oh gosh, I, I, I'm sorry. It's so hot. We got like 30 degrees. That's all woolen. I already drank like two liters today. It's. I, I think I'll go for a swim now. There's a swamp nearby. Mm -hmm.